Welcome to part 2 of the mystical and initiatic path of the Tarot. The thoughts being presented in this video are extracts from a presentation I made for Triangle Lodge, Rosicrucian Learning Center of Dallas. These are strictly my opinions and not the views of any organization that I'm affiliated with. I am Wayne from Rodney Illustrations, creator of the Global Fusion Intuitive Tarot, published by US Games Systems. In this video, we'll be looking at the mystical method for attuning with the archetypes. Ideally, you'd want to be in a meditative and receptive state for this procedure, so I strongly recommend treating this method with the same reverence that you would, say, any other mystical exercise, setting the tone and making sure that you can operate without distraction in as serene an environment as possible and equipping yourselves with a writing apparatus because journaling is an important part in declaring your intentions or in documenting your experiences. Burn incense, light a candle, do some kind of cleansing if you need to, then sit or stand quietly where you then contemplate whatever it is that you want guidance with beforehand. Say for instance if you have a problem that's been confounding you, the cards can be used to help you problem solve. First, you'd clearly articulate what the problem or concern is by either writing it down or stating it clearly either verbally or in your mind. Then you shuffle the cards and as you're doing that, ask your higher self for guidance. As you're shuffling the cards, the repetitive motion should be helping you to get into a deeper meditative state. Then once you feel compelled, select the cards at random, whether that's one card, two cards, multiple cards, or whether you want to cut the deck or draw from the top, bottom, or the middle, you have to trust your intuition on this. Then lay the cards on a flat surface. If it's one card, it's okay to hold it. If it's multiple cards, lay them down face up, setting intention and being deliberate. Intention is one of the buzzwords that's been proliferating the metaphysical community for some time now. When I was in art school, one of my teachers told me something that stuck with me. She was quoting the American abstract expressionist painter Robert Motherwell by saying, Every brushstroke is a decision. Thus, planting the seed for intentional approaches towards my painting technique. This teacher also suggested to me that I had more of an affinity towards the symbolist movement because prior to that, I was considering myself more a surrealist. Anyway, a similar concept can be found in the field of filmmaking with the aphorism, every frame a painting, Stanley Kubrick being an excellent example of setting up shots that are rich in symbolism that provoke emotion and add dynamism to the storytelling. When it comes to reading the tarot, the manner in which you lay the cards can also help you in this process, if you're likewise intentional in your process. If you study sacred geometry or sigils, you'll understand that specific shapes, lines, and patterns also correspond to specific energies. Randomly laying the cards is fine because I think that your intention in the form of willpower supersedes some of these other things, but on the converse, the more deliberate that you are about selecting a pattern or shape for laying the cards, the better your results will be. You can lay the cards in a straight line if your concern focuses on a progression of events. You can use triangles to manifest and squares to restrict. The Celtic cross spread or the Celtic cross spread is perhaps the most common spread associated with tarot readings. Like the cards themselves, the exact origins of this spread are unknown. The concept of working with a cross pattern does not necessarily indicate a religious basis, as the four points of a cross can also refer to the cardinal directions or the four alchemical elements. Do your own research and find out what suits you best. Each card in the spread represents a path or a choice, option 1, option 2, option 3, etc. That would be one way, or you could have one card that represents the problem and the remaining selected cards becoming things to consider. Due to the multifaceted nature of the symbols on the cards, using them in this manner will facilitate you seeing aspects of a problem that you had not considered before. Since all of the cards are universal archetypes, whichever card you draw is capable of providing you with some kind of insight and will cause you to examine the situation in a new light from a new perspective that you had not thought to consider previously. 
On the macro level, the spreads are the patterns in which we lay the cards. And aren't these all just geometric shapes if you look at them in the abstract? In which case, they are essentially sigils. The card spread is a symbol in and of itself, which will also reinforce the message of what you're trying to tap into. On the micro level, with the individual cards, you can select the cards that correspond to your astrological or numerological profile. For example, if you're a Virgo, as a sun sign, you can choose the Hermit card as your first card and make your way through the other correspondences. If your rising sign is Taurus, you can choose the Hierophant card to represent this. All of these cards have astrological assignments. There are cards that represent the decans as well, so if your Mercury is in Virgo, that's a Ten of Pentacles, Jupiter in Leo, Six of Wands, etc. On the extreme micro, we have the astrology depicted within the cards, but on the extreme macro, you can choose the most opportune season, month, day, or hour to do a reading, depending on whichever planetary or celestial energy corresponds to what your reading is about. There are also Kabbalistic correspondences with the cards, whereby each card is associated with a Hebrew letter and occupies either one of the Sephirotic spheres or one of the paths on the Tree of Life. So if you're already interested in using the Kabbalistic Tree of Life as a psychological or spiritual map, then using the Tarot can accentuate and amplify such work because incorporating pictures and symbols that you can identify with, in addition to some of these other abstract concepts, can only be beneficial. This method is called pathworking. Now, while Kabbalah is certainly an option for some, it's probably better suited for intermediate and advanced practitioners, people who have already had a working knowledge of what these concepts mean and the maturity and life experience that makes truly identifying with these ideas fruitful. But not everyone has these Judeo-Christian inclinations, and since Tarot is universal as far as I'm concerned, there are workarounds. Using correspondences, you can reformat the tree itself with the appropriate icons from systems that you're more comfortable with. Just be mindful and respectful when you're incorporating these symbols and traditions. The other thing that you can do is disregard using these methods altogether and instead take the fool's journey or the hero's journey and study each card individually, like in the book Meditations on the Tarot. The beautiful thing about this day and age is that there are niche decks from a variety of experienced deck builders or people from different spiritual backgrounds, so with a little bit of searching, you'll be most likely able to find something akin to your predilections. Proceeding through these cards individually in a sequential manner is a highly initiatic process, especially if you do it with sincerity and endeavor to fully comprehend the cards thoroughly. Remember, an initiation is a shift in consciousness and an expansion of who you are. Studying the cards like this will bring spiritual insight, intellectual edification, and ultimately result in a change in character. Now, there are some points that I'd like to address going back to divination. First of all, all of us are divine beings and all of us have the potential to utilize what are considered to be spiritual gifts. Some people are naturally going to be more attuned or have a better disposition to do so. Talent, if you will, but anyone can do it. That being said, it's sometimes hard to tell who's real from who's faking it for money or fame. So you, as an aspirant who's seeking this kind of metaphysical information from strangers, have to be judicious and also try to rely on your own intuition first. Secondly, Sometimes, even if you're a very naturally very intuitive person, it might be necessary to seek somebody else's counsel because the situation might be too close for you to analyze it objectively. Even doctors have doctors, not always, but as a good practice. So in my opinion, it's important that if someone has a calling to serve others by using the cards, as mystics we should respect and honor that and not get on our mystical high horse and disrespect it, especially considering that these psychics are out here helping people providing a needed service. So yes, in my opinion, they should be compensated for the same reason teachers and other service providers are compensated. One thing that I think that's really important is that during your mystical journey into the Tarot, you're going to come across sometimes varying and contrasting viewpoints, and that's okay. 
The same is true with any spiritual or mundane path. One person or one camp will say this, whereas another camp or another person will say something else. I want you to remember though, everyone has a fragment of the truth and in their ecosystem, their cosmology, the way how they navigate the spiritual and mundane world, it all makes sense to them. Instead of holding on to the shoestrings of these soul personalities, what you should instead do is journal, document, document your own process, experiment, and find out what works for you. Because at the end of the day, it's really all about what you and your connection is with Source. You're never going to be able to recreate somebody else's path to enlightenment, not Buddha, not Krishna, not anyone. And if you're an initiate, especially, you need to understand that you shouldn't be worshipping a Plato, an Aristotle, a Blavatsky, a Papus, etc. These people were human beings, mortal people, and you're just as capable, if not more so, than them, with all due respect. Know yourself, and you shall know the universe and the gods. So what does knowing yourself look like in practical terms? I propose that in identifying and playing to your strengths, identifying your weaknesses and healing your traumas are essential steps. The late Dr. Lonnie Edwards used to have us write down what we thought were the attributes of the soul and the attributes of ego in his workshops. It's the same idea. Any of these paths for self-help and even professional help if you require the aid of a trained psychiatrist or psychologist can be beneficial. Astrology, numerology, hermeticism, etc. are all imprinted in the cards to help you identify your strengths and correct your flaws and empower yourselves. Strengths can help guide you in the direction that you need to channel your efforts in areas where you have the greatest disposition to succeed. And knowing your character flaws will help you to do the shadow work, to identify the root of negative traits so that you can do the necessary work to heal. Knowledge is power. A mistaken notion about the Tarot is that some people are under the misconception that it suggests a fatalistic determinism that binds the future, but this is not so. There are infinite potentialities of the future all waiting to exist in a state of unmanifest creation. Reading the cards can only at best give us some inclination of what may occur if things continue along their current trajectory. Just like modern day marketing methods using algorithms can predict to a great extent the buying habits of people based on the study of data gathered from the behavior patterns of consumers. While the Tarot does not entirely operate through means of statistical analysis, it does work in a similar manner by using symbolism to communicate to our subconscious mind. As for what the future holds, we cannot control global events, natural occurrences, or the actions of others. But like the archetype of the magician, we always can choose how we can respond to the situations we encounter. The Tarot, therefore, is a tool that focuses our desire and helps us to attune to an aspect of unmanifest creation. In other words, the cards can help us gain access to the collective unconscious, and through willingness and direct action, the individual can gain profound insight and potentially set events into motion which bring about a situation into being. So now let's reflect on everything that we've just covered. And as we go forth into the world, back into our daily lives, may we be inspired to act in accordance to divine grace and reflect divinity's beauty in all of our lives, so that in turn we may influence the lives of others in a positive and harmonious way. Please feel free to comment below and share your thoughts, observations, and interpretations. It's been my sincere pleasure to have been with you all here today. Thank you for watching. My name is Wayne from Rodney Illustrations, creator of the Global Fusion Intuitive Tarot, published by US Games Systems. Links to everything are in the description. Wishing you all the best in your heroes or heroines journeys. Peace and blessings.